Best Bites Forever. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Chef Alicia, and in this video, I'm making a salmon BLT. Let's rock it out. I'm gonna start off here by making my spread. So I'm doing a cream cheese spread because we're gonna be putting salmon on this, and obviously cream cheese and salmon are friends. So I have about a quarter of a piece of a cream cheese block. I don't know, what is that, two ounces. I also have some fresh dill here, and I don't know exactly how much it is. It probably would be difficult to measure on a scale, but this is what we're looking at here. And if I kinda do this, you know, let's call it a tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon and a half before I chop it up. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up my dill. I do want to give you a little note here on chopping your herbs, which is don't chop your poor little herbs to death, okay? You don't want to go over them and over them and over them until you have like oil on your cutting board. You can see I have like a tiny little bit. You see these little streaks? That is not what you want, okay? Like you don't want to have a little green puddle because that is basically the oils coming out of the herbs and leaving the flavor on your cutting board. Not a good thing. So I have that in my little cream cheese bowl, and of course I want to add a little bit of salt. Not too much, but just, hmm, let's go a little bit more. Let's call that a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and of course some freshly ground black pepper. And I'm just going to kind of mash that together. Obviously I did go ahead and soften up my cream cheese. The reason that I am knocking this out first is because I want it to have time to pick up the flavor, you know, the dill getting into the cream cheese and just kind of let it mesh. You know what would also be really good is some capers in here, but that's totally up to you. I'm not going to add them today. I'm pretty happy with my little dill and cream cheese situation. So this is ready to go. I'm just going to put it over to the side for now. Next I'm going to need some extremely thin slices of red onion, so I'm just going to kind of take my time and really get them thin. Check it out like thin thin like this little tiny paper thin slices and as I'm slicing them they are going to be going into water that's just gonna kind of pull back the flavor a little bit you're still gonna have a really nice red onion flavor but it's not going to overpower anything I'm also going to go ahead and cut up just a really thin little piece and I'm gonna kind of like run my knife across it this is gonna go into my cucumber salad so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put it over here in my water but I want to go ahead and get this going ahead of time for the same reason that I got my spread going ahead of time, which is I want all of the flavors to have time to kind of come out and mesh and melt. So this is my little bowl of red onions. I'm going to put it to the side. Next, I'm going to chop up a piece of cucumber. This is going to be going into my cucumber salad, obviously, right? Ooh, this guy's not super straight. <laughs> He's a little bit difficult, but that's okay. So what I want to do is quarter it first because I want my salad to be bite size. I don't want to have to be, you know, like working my fork trying to get a bite. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this, I don't know, like maybe this thick-ish of slices. And I have my little bowl right here that these are going into. Can you see it? There we go, a little bit better for you. By the way, this is an English cucumber that I'm cutting up, so it doesn't have the same seeds that the other one does. You can see it's just got these kind of teeny little, you know, seeds going on in there. It doesn't have the really kind of huge ones. So I'm going to finish this up and put it to the side. Next I'm going to be wanting some tomato on my sandwich because we are making a BLT, so we need the tomato. Goodness sakes, I need to sharpen that. Oh, there we go. Nice little thin slice of tomato. Same thing. I just don't want anything crazy going on. I'm going to take these seeds out too because I'm not a huge fan of the seeds. They're kind of bitter to me. I'm just going to pull them out whoop, like so. I'm going to cut a couple more slices for my sandwich. Gorgeous. Here I just have a really tiny little piece of cabbage. You can use any lettuce that you want for this, but I just happen to have cabbage in my refrigerator. And not only that, but as I was kind of thinking this sandwich through, I decided the cabbage would be really good on here because, you know, cabbage kind of is friends with fish. Like you see it on fish tacos, you know, you see them together all the time. So, you know, why not? This can be our lettuce. Use whatever you want. You don't want to use cabbage, don't use cabbage. I'm going to put it here with my tomatoes so they're just kind of chilling together. Now that my chopping is done, I'm going to go ahead and finish up my cucumber salad. So in here are the cucumbers that I chopped up. I went ahead and I took out those red onions and just kind of dried them a little bit in a paper towel. Those are going to go in there. 
I'm also adding in some red wine vinegar. I'm not going to measure. You can measure if you want, but I don't know. Teaspoon, two teaspoons ish. You can always adjust it to your own flavor. I also like to put the teeniest, tiniest little bit of sugar, not that much, but maybe about half of that, so probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. That just kind of softens up the acid that's in the vinegar, and it's going to make it really nice. And a teeny little bit of salt, same thing, just a tiny little pinch, eighth to, I don't know, a quarter of a teaspoon, a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Give this a nice little stir, and you have a really nice and super easy little cucumber salad you know, little side dish here. I'm going to go ahead and cover this up and put it in the fridge for now until I finish cooking my bacon and my salmon, which I think we're ready to get going. So I'm just going to add my bacon into the pan, and this is an uncured, thick-cut, applewood smoked bacon. I'm definitely not using all of this for the one sandwich that I'm making, but it never hurts to have extra bacon in the house. You know what I mean? So once your bacon gets to where you want it, go ahead and take it out of the pan and put it to the side. I myself am a crispy bacon kind of girl, so I'm just going to take these little crispy guys out and I'm going to let the rest keep on cooking until they are nice and crispy too. By the way, don't throw that bacon grease out. Go ahead and put that like into a container. You can save that and use it when you cook. And if you follow my channel already, you know that I use my little bacon grease container. I use bacon grease all the time when I cook. So I'm going to keep probably about two tablespoons in the pan, but I'm going to put the rest into my little container and save it. Let me show you guys something really quickly. The salmon sometimes has these bones. They're called pen bones. And when I do this, you see these guys sticking out? Normally they're going to remove those at the butcher block, and they're not super easy to get out. They're pretty stuck in there. The best way to get them out is with a pair of needle nose pliers, and usually I have some sitting around for just this occasion. Unfortunately, I cannot seem to find them, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my paring knife and cut right next to them and pull them out. It's kind of going to make my presentation a little bit less pretty, but maybe I'll just keep that other piece of meat off to the side and not even put it on there. We'll kind of see how it goes. Just thought I'd show you here that my plan is kind of working. See, I took my paring knife and I cut really close to the bones and I'm just kind of grabbing them and pulling them out. I would definitely prefer to have not had to do it that way, but you can't leave those bones in there and put it on a sandwich, obviously, because it's just not going to be enjoyable to be biting into bones every three seconds. I'm going to go ahead and check my other piece. Okay, so here I have that same pan. I did wipe it out and then I added two tablespoons of the bacon grease back in there. And I just want to see... Nope, we're not quite hot enough yet. Okay, let's try that again. Getting a little bit of sizzle sound there. I'm going skin side down first. And then I'm going to actually turn these sideways once I do them skin side down since I had to kind of go in there and pull those pin bones out. And I want them to kind of keep together as best as I can get them to do so. And it's kind of up to you how done you want your salmon to be. I am going to cook mine to medium. So to me, that's the perfect salmon temperature. Totally up to you where you want to go with it though. But you can see this is already cooking. It only takes like two to three minutes depending on the temperature that you're looking for. But I really think medium is perfect. So that is where I'm going with this. Also feel free to add some additional salt and pepper if you want to. Since I'm using the bacon fat, I'm not going to put any more salt onto it, but but if you want to, go ahead. I want you to take a quick look at the color of my salmon. You see, it's definitely turning opaque. I do still have a nice red center. And this is the wild caught Alaskan salmon. So it has that really beautiful, kind of dark, rich color to it with the no color added, which is nice. This piece right here, I think, is just about good to go. If you look here, you can see there's still that nice line in the middle but it has a nice sear on the outside. So I am going to pull that guy off. I definitely don't want to overcook my salmon. This piece is a little bit thicker, so I'm going to go for about another 30 seconds. Let's take a little peek inside of our salmon here. It's hot, so I just took it off. Ooh, do you see that? Absolutely gorgeous, perfect medium right where I want it. Sorry for the vent fan in the background, but my oil is getting a little bit hot. You know what, I'm not going to break this dude open. 
he is a perfect medium. I can touch it and tell. It is gorgeous. I'm so tempted to eat that bite, but I'm not. I'm going to plate it up. By the way, here is my toasted bagel. All right, let's put it together. I have my beautifully toasted bagel here, and I still have that dill cream cheese. Remember, we put that to the side earlier. I'm going to give a nice layer onto both sides of my bagel. And next I'm going to add a couple of tomatoes and by the way I um, chose the bagel because I was kind of doing like a little play on like a lox and cream cheese so I like the bagel I like the cream cheese you know the dill kind of going on it all kind of comes together it's a little bit fun there are my red onions that I did soak you remember that a little bit of the cabbage going on there I'm not gonna get too fussy about it Next, I'm going to put some bacon. Of course, you can do this in whatever order you want, guys. Put it on there however you want. I do want my bacon hanging over like this, okay, because it looks better like that. It's like, ooh, so bacony, right? Ooh, look, we're going to do four pieces. That guy's kind of skinny and sad, isn't he? You know what, though? He's pretty, so we'll put him on there. And then last but not least, break that. Like I was saying, last but not least, I'm going to add my piece of salmon on here. This is kind of fat, like in my head, the butcher was going to do this awesome job of cutting two thin slices like that, but came out a little different than I pictured. It's okay. I don't think I want the skin side facing out though for my picture. Ooh, look, can you see in there? Ooh. So there it is. I'm going to go ahead and give it its lid and do my plate up. Yeah, so I went ahead and cut that in half because I just wasn't happy with it. And now it is perfect and it's going to be a lot easier for me to eat. So there it is. Amazingly gorgeous. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm putting it on my plate. And there is my plate up. Don't forget to like. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Back. Bye. Forever.com